O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me, they make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. You, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword my precious life from the power of the dog. 
save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Tonight's reading is from Matthew chapter 27. We'll be focusing on this reading throughout the season of Lent. Each week, taking a look at a different focus in the text. Tonight, we have our next piece of the passion, the die. Die is singular for dice. Um, The soldiers at the feet of the cross cast lots, that's essentially dice, to receive Jesus' clothing. That's what we'll be exploring in tonight's message. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters. They gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. Kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spit on him, took the reed, and struck him on the head. When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. And they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been privileged to spend two summers in Israel as part of an archaeological dig. The site we were working at was a Greek city overlooking the Sea of Galilee, and it was July of 2010, and we were working nearing the end of the dig season, getting down to the floor. Now, the floor is where the interesting finds are, especially at this site, where it was destroyed by an earthquake in the 700s A.D., As we were working there, we're starting to clear away the last set of stones, and the man next to me has a pickaxe, kind of pries up the stone, flips it over, and there's a face staring out from painted plaster on the backside of that rock. It was the face of a god, a goddess, technically, the goddess Tyche. You probably know her by a better name, Luck. Luck wearing a a crown around her head in the shape of the city gates. This was pretty common practice in the ancient world. Each town would adopt a god for themselves, and and luck was a very, very popular god. Luck was the one that provided prosperity and well-being to the city. Luck was the one that continued to provide and protect that city, which is why Tyche was wearing that crown of city gates on her head. In the ancient world, luck was a god, something worth worshiping, someone worth attaching yourself to. Now, the trouble with luck, with Tyche, a little bit fickle. Sometimes she would 
do what you want. At other times, yeah, she kind of did her own thing. So as much as you hoped for luck, whether you got her favor or not is another question. Now today, we've mostly moved past that understanding of luck as a god or a goddess. But that phrase that we use all the time, good luck, was initially tied in with this goddess of fortune. Parts of that still cling to our cultural memory. You probably know the song, Luck Be a Lady Tonight. It's literally a prayer to the god of luck, the goddess Fortune. Now again, probably used more figuratively in that song than a literal prayer to luck. But for us, when we think about this idea of of luck, it's something of, of just random chance. You, you, literally, the, the phrase is you, you throw your dice. It's a throw of the dice whether you get something or not. Flip a coin, pull a name out of a hat, pick straws, whatever it is. We have this idea of luck that it is pure random chance. That there's no divine hand in it, there's no human hand in it, it, it just is what it is. But you know, Scripture talks about things like that, the throwing of dice, drawing of straws. In Scripture, they call it casting lots. You would cast lots for a number of things in Scripture, primarily for picking who's in charge of the priestly service this month. They were casting lots for for inheritance of the land. Which tribe got which territory? Done by lots. Casting lots told you who was going to be a gatekeeper in Jerusalem. They cast lots to find out which disciple would replace Judas in that group of the twelve. The book of Acts has that. We have this idea that that casting lots, that throwing dice is a completely random thing. Yet the book of Proverbs says, The lot is cast, but the Lord determines its outcome. Far from being a random event, The casting of lots, the throwing of dice, especially as we see it play out in Scripture, is another way for God to act apart from human effort. It's almost in this way we see it exclusively. I mean, man has no choice in how those dice land, loaded dice aside. Drawing straws is completely random. Name out of a hat, assuming no one has cheated is a way for humans to step back from that decision-making process. It's a chance for God to act unilaterally in choosing whatever decisions being made, whoever is being chosen for office. The casting of lots is a divine act where God chooses something for his people. When we look at the cross, it almost seems like it's the, the very opposite of that kind of act. That at the cross, it seems like human beings are at their worst, doing whatever they can, using their hands, and it seems like God is far off away from this process. He's even forsaking His Son. Of course, He's not at work here, is He? You even have that symbolic act at the foot of the cross, casting dice, casting lots to take Jesus' clothes. It's all random, right? It's mankind doing its thing, but God, not present. And yet we do know otherwise. We sang just a moment ago in that Psalm 22, what almost as verbatim from Matthew's gospel. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. The throwing of dice, the casting of lots at the foot of the cross was foretold thousands of years before, hundreds of years, about a thousand years before Christ. God already was setting the stage 
He already was laying the foundation to say, this act that you think is pure malice on man's part, this act that you think is pure chance, pure meaningless, is in fact his own work. God's work through mankind's worst efforts to bring about life and salvation for you and me. The cross, we see God acting in a way that is is veiled. It's hidden. It doesn't make sense to us. It is not clear at first reading. It takes the eyes given to us by the Holy Spirit to recognize, to understand, to see God at work even in the midst of this evil. Even today, I wonder how much we put stock in luck as opposed to God. I know even myself, it's it's just part of our vocabulary, good luck, instead of saying God's blessings. It's helpful for us to recognize that even the most random thing we can think of throwing dice is even in control of our God. He is the one that determines all of those outcomes. Now, there's another conversation worth having about the evil that is in this world and why does God allow some things to happen and not others. That's that's part of another conversation. But seeing God at work, even in the throwing of dice, is a check on our hearts and our minds. Now, we don't often attribute the throw of dice to any other foreign gods, even luck itself as a goddess. We're generally past that. But we see far too much of our own effort in what goes on. Giving ourselves credit for what we do, because God obviously had no hand in that. Or we see something as completely random. Obviously, God wasn't at work there. That was just a coincidence. Or maybe God is more powerful than we realize. Maybe He's at work in and through us more than we would like to admit. When we see Christ on the cross and the dice being thrown at His feet, in many ways our world is broken. It doesn't make sense. Why why take His clothes? Why cast lots? You look at the cross, you look at the dice, is is God really in control? And yet the word of God rings true. Yes, God is in control. Even in something as insignificant as throwing dice. But if he is in control there, how much more is he in control with his son on the cross? They're not just out of accident, not just because of the spite of human beings, but because of the plan, the foreknowledge of God. Working in Christ to bring salvation to you and me. And if he's at work there, how much more is he at work now in you? placing you in the exact moment in time, in the exact location He wants you to be so that you may proclaim that Christ crucified. You may testify, bear witness to the truth that even a throw of the dice is not as random as you may think. We trust not just that dice bring us the favor we want, Trust in Christ. What we need is not to win at dice, but to receive Christ, who is crucified and risen for you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. Amen. Let's stand. Let
let my prayer rise before you as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, where the world sees random chance, we see your divine hand. Help us to trust in you to provide for all we need, that our hope would be found in the cross of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.